welcome to Stories Podcast. I'm your host, Amanda Weldon. Today's story is called Phaeton Steals the Sun, an adaptation of a Greek myth written for you by Daniel Hines. Thanks. Enjoy the episode. Phaeton Steals the Sun Once upon a time, in ancient Greece, four horses with giant feathery wings stood at the ready. They looked like the strongest, most beautiful horses that ever galloped, and their mighty wings sprouted from their proud backs like those of some giant eagle. These were the cousins of the mighty Pegasus, and they were just as wondrous as their more famous family member. The only difference? Where Pegasus was the shining silver of moonlit snow, these four were gold. Not the solid gold of rings and crowns, but the blazing tawny gold of summer sunrise. Good morning, my mighty steeds, came a booming voice. Ready as always, I see. Never been a better horse born than these. It was Helios, the horse's owner. Helios was one of the gods of ancient Greece and a child of the Titans. He was full of old magic and he had one of the most important jobs of all. Each morning, he would hook his chariot to the sun and pull it across the sky of Greece, bringing light to all the eager plants and animals and people of the land. It was a difficult and dangerous job, but Helios was up to it. Come now, Phaeton, ready the reins, he called. Phaeton was his son. He'd only recently started letting Phaeton help, and the boy was so proud he seemed to glow. And, well, maybe he did glow, at least a little. After all, Helios was a god, so Phaeton was considered a demigod. And, being Helios' son, he carried some of that power himself. Some is not all, though, as Phaeton would learn to his dismay. Make sure the straps are tight, boy, Helios said. They were standing on the edge of a cloud near Mount Olympus, high above the world where the rest of the gods dwelled. Yes, Dad, I got it, said Phaeton, cinching down the red leather straps against the golden bodies of the flying horses. All ready to go. Good work, son, Helio said as he stepped into his golden chariot and picked up the reins. Now step back. I'll see you tonight. Phaeton beamed at his father and stepped back. Onward to greet the day! The god called out to the horses. They beat their mighty wings once, twice, and then leapt into the air. The golden chariot and Helios must have weighed hundreds of pounds, but the horses pulled them effortlessly into the sky. As Phaeton watched, the chariot flew over the horizon, dipped down to grab the sun, and then blazed back up into the air. The sun found its place in the sky and started shining, spreading molten gold light onto the land. One day, Phaeton said to himself as the sun warmed his skin, one day that'll be me. He said the same thing later that day to his friends, fellow demigods Harmonia and Arcus. They didn't seem to agree. Don't be silly said the beautiful Harmonia. Your father is a god, but you're just a demigod. There's no way you can drive your father's chariot. What? said Phaeton, surprised. Of course I can. I've been helping get ready and I know all the steps. Friend, said Arcus, clapping Phaeton on the shoulder. Getting ready is one thing, but driving the sun chariot is another. Forget about it. Come hunting with me instead. Phaeton shrugged off his hand. You always want to go hunting. Every time anyone has a problem, hunting is your answer. Arcus blushed a little. I like hunting. Don't get mad at me just because you can't drive the sun chariot. Come on, guys, Harmonia said, raising her hands between them. We don't have to fight. There's an easier way to solve this. They both turned to her. She smiled impishly. Well, I think if Phaeton wants to prove he can drive the chariot, then he should drive the chariot. Arcus rolled his eyes. 
Helios would never let him drive. He doesn't even let Zeus drive, and he's the thunder god. Yeah, said Phaeton. Besides, I've asked before, and he told me I'm too young. More like too mortal, said Harmonia. Admit it, your human side is way too chicken to do it. She started to bark, bark, like a chicken, and Arcus laughed. I am not a chicken, said Phaeton, clenching his fists. I could definitely drive the sun chariot if I wanted to. Sure you could, Harmonia said with a little smile. We definitely believe you. She winked obviously at Arcus, and they both cracked up again. Fine, said Phaeton a little too loudly. Fine, you just watch the sunrise tomorrow morning. Watch and see how well I drive. His friends laughed again, and then the conversation moved on. Harmonia and Arcus forgot about their teasing right away, but not Phaeton. He dwelled on it for the rest of the day. Even during dinner, he was quiet and distant, playing with his food more than eating it. His thoughts were consumed with thoughts of driving the sun chariot. He imagined himself, tall and broad as his father, and muscled like a statue, standing in the chariot. He dreamed of taking up the heavy leather reins, smooth and warm, and shouting the flying horses into action. He fantasized about scooping up the sun and bringing light to people all over the world. By the time he went to bed that night, he knew he had to try. He knew he'd get in trouble, and he knew that maybe his friends weren't so friendly after all if they were going to tease him like that, but it didn't matter. He wanted to drive the sun chariot, and nothing was going to stop him. The next morning, Phaeton awoke early, dressed in the dark, and snuck out to the chariot. Helios was still asleep, and the world was quiet. Moving silent as a ghost, Phaeton got the chariot and the flying horses ready. When he was finished, it was near dawn. He knew his father would be up any moment. Don't do it, he thought to himself. If I stop now, Dad will just think I got up early to help. I won't be in trouble. He'd probably be happy. If I stop now... But he looked at the chariot, gleaming sunrise golden. He looked at the horses, beautiful tawny wings stretched wide in anticipation of their flight. No, he couldn't stop. Not now. Bad idea or no, he had to drive the chariot. He had to prove it to his friends. But more, he wanted to prove it to himself. Trembling. Phaeton stepped into the chariot and picked up the reins. The horses looked at him a little strangely, but still they stretched their wings and didn't fly. Why wouldn't they fly? Phaeton thought about what his father did and remembered. Oh, uh, onward to make the day, he said, his voice shaky. The horses looked at him again. One whinnied and stomped impatiently. Oh, okay then, Phaeton said to himself. One more time, with feeling now. Onward, to greet the day! He bellowed it in his best impression of his father, and it was good enough for the horses. They beat their mighty wings once, twice, and then leapt into the air. Yeah! Phaeton screamed in excitement as they began to fly through the air. He started punching the air in celebration, but he nearly lost the reins and calmed down a little. Okay, now to get the sun. This was the part he didn't really understand, but his father had told him once that the horses knew the way. Phaeton hoped that it was true, because he certainly didn't know. Thankfully, they banked and swooped, and there, on the edge of Mount Olympus, Phaeton saw the sun of ancient Greece. It was beautiful, but too bright to look upon for long. He panicked for a moment about how he would carry it, but it was simpler than that. As they flew by the sun, it attached itself to the back of the chariot, blazing forth and sending prickles of warm sweat down Phaeton's back. That was it. He had the sun. Now it was time to make it rise. He flicked the reins and at once the horses beat their wings and made for the heavens.
With a rush and roar, Phaeton found himself high above the world. The horses knew the way, and they led him well. Soon, he held the reins and stared in wonder. The world was spread below him. The craggy outlines of Greece's shores marbled brown and green against the aquamarine of the seas. It was the most beautiful thing he had ever seen, and it made him whoop with joy. The horses beat their wings and their speed picked up. The wind rushed by Phaeton's head, pushing back his hair and tugging at his clothes. He clung tightly to the reins, slipping in the chariot, the heat of the sun starting to sting his back. Whoa, slow down, he cried. But the horses either couldn't hear or didn't care. They went faster still, and Phaeton watched in horror as they tore across the sky, the sunlight pouring over Greece and then moving too quickly, giving them a few minutes of daylight before casting them back into night. Too fast! Too fast! We need to make sure they have sun all day! Seeing the horses were still ignoring him, he pulled on the reins. They ignored that, too. What could he do? He eyed the golden rear of the horse lashed closest to the chariot. When he got the horses ready in the morning, they always listened to a little swat on the rump. If he could just get close enough... He reached out, letting go of the reins with one hand. Stretching, his fingertips just brushed the horse's hair. He leaned out of the chariot. The wind roared past his ears. He put his belly on the chariot's edge and leaned further out, his feet leaving the floor. Just a little more. He raised his arm to slap the horse's rump and get its attention, but the horses turned in the air at the same moment. Phaeton lost all balance. His stomach dropped. Screaming, he saw the chariot suddenly above him as he plummeted towards the ground. He flailed wildly, and in a bit of luck, his hand found the loose reins as he fell past them. He grabbed on and clung tightly, hanging below the chariot now. His unexpected weight pulled the lead horse hard to the side, and it collided with the horse next to it. Their wings tangled, and they started falling too, the horses and chariot falling with them. Phaeton screamed as he saw they were plummeting towards a giant forest. As they got closer, the green leaves started to smoke and crisp under the heat of the sun, now much closer than it was ever supposed to be. The horses flapped wildly, and they pulled up just above the treetops. Well, where the treetops used to be. The sun burned them away as they got close, and where that forest used to be, now there was nothing but a smoking desert. Oh, not good, he squeaked as the horses fought against the tangled reins. With a burst of desperate strength, Phaeton managed to climb the leather, hand over hand, and pull himself back into the chariot. Just in time to see the sun boil away a large section of the Nile River. Definitely not good. He yanked the reins, trying to get the horses back in order, but he only tangled them more. All four were stuck now. Two couldn't flap their giant wings at all. The chariot rose slowly in the air, hovered for a moment on the desperate flaps of the two remaining horses, but they couldn't do it alone. The chariot tipped and then began to fall again. No, no, no! Phaeton's words turned into a scream as he spun wildly towards the ground, flying horses tangled, chariot plummeting, sun blazing all around in an endless lurching blur. His stomach flipped and flopped and his face went milk white and it was all he could do not to be sick. My dad is gonna be so mad! Then, sudden as sneezing, everything froze. Phaeton blinked, peering out from the rim of the chariot. Had he managed to land safely? Unfortunately, he had not. No, he was still hovering in air. He hadn't landed, he'd been caught. In more ways than one. Holding the chariot aloft in midair was his father, looking angrier than he'd ever been. Worse, next to him was Zeus leader of all the Greek gods. And as angry as Helios looked, Zeus was even angrier. 
thunder and lightning danced in his palms and his eyes smoked like coals. Have a nice ride? Helios asked. Um, Phaeton replied. I should blast you out of the sky. You burned a forest into a desert. You boiled away part of the Nile. I, I, uh. Zeus sputtered, too mad to finish. Helios laid a hand on Zeus's shoulder. He's still my son. How about a punishment that doesn't involve any lightning strikes? Just this once? Fine, grumbled Zeus. But if I ever see him anywhere near the sun chariot again... You won't, squeaked Phaeton. I better not, roared Zeus. And then, with a peal of thunder, he was gone. And true to his word, Helios punished Phaeton, though he didn't use any lightning. The boy was banned from returning to Mount Olympus and lived the rest of his days among the human world. It was a little hard to get used to at first, but eventually, well, he found a job as a chariot driver. A regular chariot driver. He had a few more crashes, but a whole lot of fun. And most importantly, he didn't burn up any more forests or boil any rivers. Not even one. Not even once. Though, he was known to hit an ancient mailbox or two. The End Thanks for listening.